Hello everyone, welcome to Affairs Cloud. Recently, the World Bank had released the Human Capital Index for the year of 2020. So in this video, we will be taking a look at this Human Capital Index released by the World Bank. We will try to understand what is human capital and where India stands as far as this index is concerned. So the Human Capital Index for 2020, as we noted, was released by the World Bank. And this was released on the 16th of September 2020. In the 2020 index, Singapore topped the index scores with 0.88 score. And as far as India is concerned, in, we have been ranked 116 among the 174 countries considered for the 2020 index with a score of 0.49. This score is an improvement over the 2018 score of 0.44 although the ranking has dropped from 115 in 2018 to 116. But it has to be noted that in 2018, only 157 countries were considered for the index. Now, the 2020 index includes data related to health and education and covers approximately 98% of the world's population up to March of 2020. Now, this timeline is very important as this covers the timeline before the severe onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now let us attempt to understand what is human capital. So human capital is the combination of skill, knowledge, personality attributes and any other experience possessed by an individual when these parameters are viewed in terms of their capability to produce economic output and economic value. So this in essence is human capital. The human capital index itself has three components. These are survival, expected years of quality adjusted school and health environment. Now these three components of the index are divided into five indicators and are measured by taking into account six empirical variables. These five indicators are child survival, school enrollment, quality of learning, healthy growth and adult survival. The indicator of child survival is measured through the probability of every newborn surviving up to the age of 5. The indicator of school enrollment is measured through the variable of expected years of school. The indicator of quality of learning is measured through two variables namely harmonized test scores that measures the quality of education and learning adjusted years of schooling. The indicator of healthy growth is measured through the fraction of children under 5 years of age that are not stunted growth and the indicator of uh, adult survival is measured through the adult survival rate. In measuring the human capital, the index attempts to describe how current health and education interventions that is governmental policies and interventions related to health and education and their subsequent outcomes shape the economic productivity of the next generation of workers. In essence, the index attempts to describe government policies related to health and education, the way they alter the human capital of the nation. Now, the human capital index itself is part of a larger project called the Human Capital Project. And it is a part of the World Bank's World Development Report. The Human Capital Project program is claimed to be a program in order to raise awareness and increase demand for interventions to build and improve upon the human capital of nations. There are three components to this human capital project. The first of them is the human capital index that we are discussing about right now, a human capital measurement metric. And the second one is a program of measurement and research to inform policy action. And the third is the program of support for countries' strategies in order to accelerate investment in human capital. Now let us take a look at the scores and the ranking for the 2020 index. So first of all, the score is measured through the average of the six variables that we take into account in order to measure the components of the index. So it is in essence an average of the measurement of those six variables and the scores lie between 0 and 1 where 1 represents a complete utilization of the human capital of the population and zero represents absolutely no utilization of the human capital. As far as ranking is concerned, 
A total of 175 countries have been considered for the 2020 index and hence the ranking is out of 175. As we noted initially, India has been ranked 116 and the score awarded for India is 0.49 which roughly translates that 49% of the human capital of the population of India has been achieved so far through the educational and health interventions of the nations. Singapore has been ranked number one in the index, followed by Hong Kong and Japan and Singapore has a score of 0.88 which means 88% human capital has been achieved in the nation. Now the bottom three nations in the index are the Central African Republic followed by Chad and South Sudan where Central African Republic has a score of only 0.29 meaning that only 29% of the potential human capital of the population of the nation has been achieved by the country. There have been few questions and controversies surrounding the index measurement as well. For instance, in 2018, India had raised serious reservation over the year's human capital index and had essentially questioned the validity of the index. The basic contention from the Indian side was that the index didn't take into account properly all the variables that are related to human capital and hence didn't paint a proper picture of India's human capital. In response to this, the World Bank's chief economist for human development had stated that an index is only a conversation opener and that all that is in the index matters but not everything that matters can be in the index. Essentially meaning that not every variable related to human capital can be accounted for by the index and hence the index should only be taken as a roadmap for countries in order to improve their interventions in, Im in increasing human capital but not as an absolute measurement or absolute picture of the country's human capital. As noted in the beginning of the video, the 2020 index collected data and measurements related to human capital up to the March of 2020. And as we all know, in most countries, the severe onset of the COVID-19 pandemic started somewhere after the March of 2020. And hence, now we need to analyze the impact of the pandemic on human capital in the world. Now, as per the index, before the pandemic struck severely, most countries had made steady progress in building human capital. Now, this has been especially true with respect to countries that have been categorized as low-income countries. As a side note, the index categorizes country into four categories. These are high income, upper middle income, lower middle income and low income countries. Now globally, the 2020 index estimates that before the pandemic struck, a child could expect to attain an average of 56% of his or her potential productivity as a future working adult. Essentially what this means is that the global average score is 0.56 that is 56% of a child's potential human capital is nurtured and nourished to be displayed eventually in the future according to the current scenario and by current I mean before the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now let us look at some of the more particular effects on human capital as a result of the pandemic. There has been major disruptions to the essential health services targeted at women and children. It has been estimated that approximately 80 million children world over will miss out on essential vaccinations and approximately a billion children are estimated to have been out of school as a result of this pandemic. Now considering a country like ours where schools are more than just a place of education and as we all know the midday meal scheme which is a part of all the government schools in our country and has been a valuable source of nutrition for school going children for years. And since schools have been shut down as a result of the lockdown imposed by the pandemic, these children will be missing out on nutrition along with their education and hence their health as well as their educational outcomes shall see a decline. Now there has also been a major decline in total income estimated at approximately 11-12% to world over and a 12% drop in employment is also estimated. Now, once again, considering a developing country like ours, where the informal section of the economy forms the major chunk of it, this effect, that is the effect in uh, decline in income, along with the drop in employment, shall be even more exaggerated as a result of the very limited social safety 
and as a result of the informal sector and the informal market itself being more vulnerable to lockdowns and pandemics. While presenting the report and the index, the president of World Bank, David Malpass, had also stated that there is a twofold inequality in this crisis that has been a result of the pandemic. He stated that one is that the developing countries are being left further behind in comparison to developed countries and within the developing countries itself, the poorer sections among this population are being left further behind. This he referred to as twofold inequality. Now taking a look at human capital and effects on human capital between the genders, human capital is slightly higher among girls than boys in most of the countries and girls have been outperforming boys in expected years of schooling and learning outcomes in most of the regions. As far as survival and health outcomes and their relative scores are compared, girls are generally better off than boys, that is their scores tend to be better than boys scores, except in the countries of India and Tonga. As we have seen so far, the attainment of human capital, at least as according to the Human Capital Index released by the World Bank, has not been very exemplary in the case of India, but has rather been very moderate. Now at the same time, an interesting aspect that we need to note here is that another report that is released by the World Bank known as the Doing Business Report or in many cases known as the Ease of Doing Business Report has ranked India quite high and the, in this ranking has also increased significantly in the last few years. In the Ease of Doing Business Report in Construction Permits, India was ranked 181 in the report of 2018 and has moved up significantly to the 27th position as of the 2020's report, showing a very significant and remarkable improvement since the implementation of the current government's reforms. But here one needs to wonder why there is a significant difference in the improvement in ease of doing business as compared with the improvement in human capital attainment. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked our video. Please leave your feedback in the form of comments. In case you have a request for any particular topic to be covered, please leave it in the comment section as well. Please remember to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.